Good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, our event, Public Health Network event today, um, which is all about nutrition in early years. My name is Lucy O'Loughlin. I'm the consultant lead for nutrition and obesity for the Public Health Wales Central Team. Um, looking forward to a, an action-packed day um, of networking with your colleagues and learning from uh, international and national expertise. So I'm just going to spend um, five, ten minutes introducing um, the uh, obesity, the Welsh Government recent launch of the um, Healthy, Healthy Weight, Healthy Wales um, consultation, a, a strategy to support people to, for us to reduce and um, treat obesity. Uh, um, and then we'll move on with the rest of the programme. Okay, so I'm going to work out my clicker. So, how many people are aware, is it okay if I do a show of hands, how many people are aware that the consultation was launched a couple of weeks ago? Pretty much the whole room. Excellent, yeah. I would have thought so with this audience. You would know about this. Um, so I'll try and zip through this quickly. Um, so we've got some questions at the end, actually, and I'll understand how many people have managed to engage with the consultation, because that's really important. It's a 12-week consultation, um, and the feedback will inform the final strategy. So it isn't cast in stone at the moment. Really important to get involved and make sure your views are heard, um, your expertise informs this strategy. Okay, so uh, please don't miss that opportunity to uh, have your say. And I really won't dwell on the case for change because I think everybody is aware of the case um, for change at the moment. These figures are around obesity, and as we know, for, for children aged four to five in Wales, um, we're talking about one in four who are overweight or obese which is really, really shocking. Um, and I've said this a few times, really. It's a tipping point for any, any country, any area, when we get to this particular point. It's a, it's a time to really galvanise our effort. OK. And the impact, m much of this impact really focuses on adults um, around the leading cause of disability in life, all of these things that we're aware of, all the particular issues that we're aware of, and, and um, big campaign around um, obesity and cancer last year across the UK, beginning to raise awareness of all of those things as well. Um, but around children, obviously we're focusing on early years today, um, and I just wanted to highlight um, the, the, the impact, the immediate impact that obesity can have um, for children and young people that, that, that we really do need to focus on because that is what parents are concerned about. It's about the now, not about the future. So we, we as health, many of us health professionals know about the future impacts, but the, the impacts in the here and now are the things that are really important to parents um, and we need to remember that. Um, and just as we worry about the poor mental well-being um, associated with eating disorders, we need to understand that obesity in, in, is, is, you know, is often a result of um, eating disorders, eating, disordered eating, um, and, and certainly is associated with the mental well-being issues um, that we should be concerned about. Okay, so the proposals in the strategy centre around four main themes. Um, and I'll just trot through the four themes very briefly for you um, to give you a flavour of, of, of it. But I should trot through it quickly because most people know, uh, know about the consultation. There's a very, very strong emphasis on leadership and enabling change. Um, and that isn't a coincidence that it's the first um, theme in the strategy. Um, this is because, you know, having looked at what has worked, what's really good and builds a sense of optimism is that there are some places in the world that are managing to make a difference and begin to reverse this, particularly around childhood obesity. Um, so having looked at what they are doing, um, what we can draw from them is that they really, really emphasise and get stuck into the leadership at every level. Right from the top, strong, visible, long-term commitment and leadership, but, but not just at the top, at every level. Um, and making sure that 
the local assets and opportunities are made the most of um, to, to approach uh, this issue that is everybody's business. And the long-term commitment is really important because there's so many different programs and initiatives that all of us have experienced that have faltered as a result of reduced funding or a change in emphasis. Um, and really, what's got to be different is this long-termism. Um, and that's, that's hard when you've got political you know, change and cycles, that kind of thing. But we, that's, that's one of the things that's really strong and emphasised. Um, and then learning, learning over time, <coughs> continually learning, learning as we go, robust national learning, but also learning at the action level. <coughs> so there's, na there's also a setting, there's a, a theme around um, environment. And uh, it's split into the food environment um, and the built environment. Um, and, uh, you know, it's difficult to cover it all here. All of this is in the strategy. But it, it kind of goes across from reformulation of food and in, in, in improving the, the food that uh, is available through the usual outlets to thinking about working with industry around promotions. We know that, that um, people do... Uh, respond to those kind of promotions, the buy one, get one free, the, as, as you enter the shop, all those promotions. And, you know, what we're hoping is that you can begin to ha uh, use that uh, innovation um, to, to get people to use, you know, buy healthier food. So that there is a, a kind of um, a real keenness to work at a government level with industry. Regulation as well around promotions and discounting and thinking about calorie labelling, all of these are proposals that you can respond to, whether you think these are good things to go for or not. This is what's being proposed. Calorie label, clearer nutrition information for people, um, and then the, the energy drinks that we want to ban and limit, limit the constant potential refills. I, um, I had to go to a funeral this week in London and I, I, um, there literally was nowhere to go for coffee other than a McDonald's. I um, haven't been in a McDonald's for a long time, to be honest, not my favourite place. Um, and I literally could not get a healthy option. There were salads. I thought, oh great, I can have a chicken salad. But none of them were available. <laughs> and it was so much cheaper to get the meal deal with the big drink as opposed to I just wanted, you know, something really simple. I ended up with a grilled chicken wrap that wasn't very nice at all um, and a, a glass of water. But um, it's pushed at you all the time. Um, and, it's, and even if you want to make a healthy choice, it's not <laughs> easy to do so. Okay, so that's the food environment. The built environment, there's so much we could do. There's so much going on around the built environment and how it shapes you know, we, we, we've got to, I guess one of the points I didn't make earlier is that obesity has, we've got to approach it uh, from a, the, you know, give it the complexity of responses based on the complexity it offers us. So it's not about simplifying it down to personal choices. It, it's about looking at it in the round and working out how we can make it so much easier. It's an absolute no-brainer to, to make the healthy choice because that's what's presented to you, that's what's the norm, that's what the environment supports. So there's a lot in there about the environment and better use of planning processes and big infrastructure projects that are coming up, making the most of those, new hospitals, new healthcare facilities, um, so, uh, South Wales Metro, how can we make the most of those opportunities to make the environment supportive? Okay, I better speed up. <laughs> healthy settings. So, the third theme is healthy settings. Again, if we can create a new normal within the places that we live, work, play, and learn, it, it will be the norm to have, um, you know, to have healthy food. It will be the norm not to have um, sugar-sweetened beverages everywhere. Um, so, you know, there probably is going to be something about being brave, um, and working you know, with partners to see that it might be a bit tricky to change the norms initially, but once the, normal is, the new normal is established, then it, you know, it, it, everyone's better, healthier in the end. So we've got some excellent work going on in settings that you're going to hear more about <coughs> today, the um, preschool work. Um, and 
uh, we, we're congratulated by the World Health Organization in Wales for, for the number of schools, for example, you know, in the Healthy School Scheme. <coughs> we have got such, a, such assets in our settings programs that we really must utilize those to work with those partners and um, uh, improve the environment and the, the norm that people experience. And then finally, on to, you know, people do need support, even if the settings and the environment are supportive, people do need support in, um, uh, in the right, right place at the right time, the right kind of support. And our, our professionals need to be well, well skilled. Um, there's been some recent work done with health visitor colleagues, um, excellent work to enable them to confidently raise the issue and, and support people, um, parents, um, who are tackling um, overweight and obesity. But it's, it's tough, and people will need those skills to, to do that confidently and effectively. Um, <clears throat> so, um, and there's probably, there's probably more in-depth skills. We might get core skills around MEC, and you'll see that's in the consultation, but we probably need to look at more in-depth skills with particular professional groups. Um, and there's a very strong emphasis on the early years, and there's absolutely, you know, it's an absolute no-brainer that we need. If, if people are, you develop your habits so early, so if we can absolutely get it right at an earlier stage and really emphasize those first thousand days and getting those um, behaviors embedded. That's why there is a, a very strong emphasis on, on the early years. That's not to say that we're forgetting across the life course, we're not, as you'll see from all the other areas and the settings work. And finally, the clinical obesity pathway, making sure that the pathway is, is robust, it's effective, it has all the components that, that, that are required everywhere, so it isn't a postcode lottery. Um, and that will take a lot of work, but, um, but again, we've got excellent practice across the country. We, we just need to bring every, everything up to that practice and, and make sure people get the right support and, um, and it's accountable, uh, people are noticing it. I didn't mention that, actually, in terms of the leadership we're going to have a, a national level accountability to ministers on this strategy. So um, that really raises the level of the priority and, and gives it a new emphasis. 